Hey there, Detroit sports fanatics, and welcome to another edition of uh, another Pistons edition of my Detroit sports show. Right here on Blog Talk Radio, live from the northern outskirts of McBain, Michigan. Uh, with yours truly, your host, Taylor Phillips. Phillips, if you have opinions about the Pistons or want to join in on the conversation, you can call in by phone at 646-478-4837. Again, that's 646 646- Four seven eight four eight three seven. The show will be 15 to 30 minutes long, as always, and is recorded and archived. You can also post your opinions in comments on my talk show post or on my timeline, on my personal Facebook profile, Taylor Phillips, at facebook.com slash phil1dt. Like my Detroit sports page, Taylor Phillips' Detroit sports page at facebook.com slash Taylor's sports page and become a fan. And in Taylor and join Taylor Phillips' Detroit sports group. And you can follow me on Twitter and on Tumblr, Tumblr, Tumblr at DT2Phillips. You can also search me on LinkedIn, YouTube, and Google at as Taylor Phillips. I'm simulcasting on YouTube via Google. There's also a chat window on blogtalkradio.com for you to comment your opinions on this show. Now before we begin talking about the Pistons, here are the guidelines for all the listeners of tonight's show. Number one, if you have called in, stay on the line so I can get to you for a talk. If you hang up by mistake, not a big deal, just redial this number, 646 478-4837, and then stay on the line. Number two, keep it very clean. No profanity, vulgarity, graphic violence talk, or any of that garbage. Or criticism of the host. Oh, actually... uh, Just... uh, Actually, just no dirty stuff, okay? Criticism is fine, actually. But I also cannot have dis- distasteful disregard or anything else below the belt of any subject matter. Number three, treat each other treat each other with respect, please. Don't call anybody names or or talk any gossip toward one about one another or or you will be muted. Number four, if you don't know much about Detroit sports, you can still just listen to my show for education and entertainment. And number five, only I can change the topic because I'm the host of the show. All right. Let's let's start off with the week in review. The Pistons were in New York. Madison Square Garden, Madison Square Garden, Madison Square Garden. Talking like a New Yorker here. I love that accent, by the way. A lot of class. Uh, a very close uh, first half, so to speak. And it, and and in fact, the game was tied at halftime, forty-one to forty-one. But then in the third quarter, the Pistons just laid off once again, 
up being outscored 32 to 17, but they outscored, but they had a stronger, much stronger fourth quarter. Outscoring the Knicks 27 to 16, but it wasn't enough as the Knicks came up, still hang up, held on for the victory 89 to 85. There was one point in the game in the final minute where Josh Smith decided not to drive the ball to the hoop when he should have. There was a very open lane. There was a wide open lane for him. He was he was covered by somebody. Could have just made a nifty little move past that one Nick defender. When the Knicks were up one, in fact, the pist in fact, the he could have given the Pistons the lead. But that's what kind of, kind of uh, helped the Josh Smith versus Maurice Cheeks controversy con continue, so to speak. but uh, most knowledgeable Piston fans are staying on top of that story. And speaking of Josh Smith, he finished with 21, could have finished with, with at least 23. Um, Carmelo Anthony, one of the biggest stars today, in the NBA finished with 34 points to lead his team to victory. Andre Drummond uh, got himself 17 rebounds. Turning points. Uh, there was a turning point right there, which was a 15 0 run in just three minutes. Created by the Knicks in the third quarter, midway through the third. Uh, and Carmelo scored 11 of his 34 points in that span. And the Knicks led 62 to 49, with 4:55 left in the third. Nine of those 11 in that span came from three-point land, with on three straight offensive possessions, and and they were all threes. For Andre Drummond here on this this article here. Uh, yeah, I'll just go to the box score. Drummond indeed finished with yet another double double: twelve points, seventeen rebounds. So did Josh Smith, twenty one points and. And and twelve rebounds. Both Josh Smith and Andrew uh, Andre Drummond collected twenty two rebounds com uh, defensively combined. Twenty two defensive rebounds.
the Pistons shot only 15.8% from three-point land, which is one of the worst, uh, one of the worst ever percentages from from that range. Pistons outscored the Knicks 48 to 38 right there. And on the fast break, 17 to 9. The Pistons' biggest lead was only two. And and the Pistons out rebounded the Knicks 16 to 9 offensively. The Pistons turned the ball over 16 times. That's another one of the things you can't have. But that's that was one of the game, one of the problems that caused the Pistons to lose that game. On to Wednesday's contest in Toronto against the Raptors, and it didn't look good at all. That one didn't look good at all. Just 25% from three-point land from the Pistons. They got out-rebounded totally, 55-47. Biggest lead was only seven. 15 turnovers, only 11 offensive rebounds. They still outscored the Raptors 46-32 in the paint and 25-10 on, on, on the fast breaks. They led 54 to 50 at halftime. Did the did the Pistons, but they got shellacked again in the second half, both the third quarter and the fourth quarter. And, and at that and at that point, Pistons fans everywhere are are just still wondering why. The Pistons just couldn't come up with a better second half. Until Friday night, as I go ahead and go to the 76ers game in Philadelphia. But by the way, Rodney Stuckey uh, returned Wednesday. Pistons at 76ers. Uh, very horrible start. Being down 19 to four. In the game. Uh, but but that was only the beginning of the first quarter. Pistons uh, kept trying and trying and trying to respond, and and they finally found that spark in that second in that second half. The Pistons trailed 36 to 28 in the after one quarter of play, and then. And in, in the entire second quarter, both teams each scored 27 points. But then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the Pistons outscore, started outscoring the 76ers in the start of the third quarter, 7-4. to four. Two straight... Uh, including two straight threes by um, I'm trying to look at the video here 
All right, second half. All right, beginning of the third quarter, Contavious Caldwell Pope puts up a three. No, no not a three, but a two, but. Uh, there was one point in time where the Pistons uh, added a uh, like an 8-0 run or something like All right, let me uh, start back o start back over from the s from halftime instead of the first quarter. The 76ers led 63 to 55. Pistons actually outscored the 76ers, started outscoring the 76ers uh, 15 to 6. 15 to 6. A 15 to 6 run to start the third quarter, including uh, two consecutive capped off by two consecutive threes by, I think it was Contavious Caldwell Pope. I found the turning point, but it was the wrong, in, the, in that article, but it was the wrong one. Um, but I'm pretty sure it, I think it was Cal Caldwell Pope who hit those special threes that gave the Pistons their first lead of the game. And I think that was the turning point. Contavious Caldwell Pope finished with 12 points. And Josh Smith uh, led the Pistons with 22 points, 13 rebounds, 7 assists, 5 block shots, and 4 steals. 5 blocks and 4, four steals. Becoming just the third player in NBA history to post those numbers. The other two were Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and Hakeem Olajuwon. Brandon Jennings cashed in with 19. 18 of them coming in the second half. I think it could have been him that knocked down those, those two threes that give the Pistons the first lead of the game. But... Um, I'm going to go to MLive.com and search the Pistons here. Bear with me here.
Actually, uh, I stand corrected. It was Brent, Brandon Jennings that hit those two uh, free throws that gave the Pistons their first lead. Uh, the second of those threes that, uh, which came from a Josh Smith steal, one of the steals that uh, one of one of Josh Smith's four steals of that night. And uh, that, that capped it off. The Pistons out-rebounded the 76ers 62-42. to They were outscored 64-50 to in the paint, but they and they were out, outscored 20-24 to in the fast break. That's kind of weird that how they... Uh, how they outscored their players in the paint on the fast break and still lose, and then they get outscored both in the paint and on a fast break and, st and actually win. But, um, and, and the Pistons still turn, all, turn the ball over 18 times. Still, still another thing to work on. The Pistons out rebounded the 76ers 25 to 13 offensively. But moving on quickly to the uh, Suns Pistons game, the, the Pistons finally won a game at the Palace. That it had to be a really intense and great game, and the Pistons finally pulled it out. 110 to 108. Josh Smith. Hit a go-ahead three, and then fouled somebody uh, at the free throw lot from behind the three-point range, who hit that, who hit all three free throws to tie it up. That was Gerald Green on a flyout effort with 4.3 seconds. Uh, and then Josh Smith uh, drove to the basket again, like every guy, every basketball player should when the game is on the line. Uh, and laid it up and in desperately with 1.2 seconds to go to make it 110 to 108. That would be the final. Josh Smith finished with 25 points. Greg Monroe got a double-double of 20 points and 11 rebounds. Um, the Pistons shot 37.1% from the free from three-point range compared to Phoenix's 17.6% uh, from from behind the three line. Piston shot 84% flat from the free throw line. Total 39.4% from the field. Still won with 110 by scoring 110 points. Coming up, uh, the Pistons uh, have five days rest before they host the Utah Jazz at 7.30. The Utah Jazz are in last place in the Northwest Div Division in the Western Conference. They're, they're dead last in the West, 12 and 26. And then Saturday, the Pistons head back to D.C. and take on the Wizards at 7 o'clock on Fox Sports Detroit Plus. The Wizards of Washington are in sixth place right now in the in the East at 16 and 19, and, and they're third place. They're in third place in the Southeast Division. Uh, got a r rumor article from DetroitSportsRag.com that. 
beat writer Jeff Moss that Joe Dumars could be fired as soon as next week. You can, I already posted the article about that. It, I know it's got a lot of stuff, but just read, read through it. That was before those, that was just uh, right after the Pistons beat the 76ers to snap their six game losing streak. I don't really have time to explain it too much of it. I, uh, I only got less than four minutes left on the show. Um, other, other Detroit sports scores, the, the Anaheim Ducks shut out the Red Wings 1-0 behind Jonas, Hit, Jonas Hitler-Hiller, which I like to call him. And and uh, Brendan Andrew Cogliano uh, scored the only goal of the game off a bad, bad turnover from Red Wings defenseman Brendan Smith, who I cannot stand. Ken Holland should not have signed Brendan Smith in the first place. Smith needs to go. Mike Babcock also forgot to call a timeout for the second for at least the second time this season. I, I, I don't like Babcock's uh, dis, lack of decision-making at all. It's killing the team. This, this whole team has, look, has been looking disfigured. No matter what goal, which goaltender they start. And uh, Babcock also, uh, I heard from most people that, that he's been... St- has been putting Cleary, Dan Cleary, more on the power, on the ice, more on the power play, more than anybody else. And Cleary hasn't generated a point on the power play at all this season. He's only got four goals. He scored a goal last night. That was in regulation, an insurance goal against the Kings last night. But uh, other than that. Cleary has struggled. He's not the only one. But uh, that's going to wrap it up for this Pistons edition of Taylor's Detroit Sports Show. Coming up Saturday night at 11, the Red Wings hosted the Red Wings uh, edition of Taylor's Detroit Sports Show will be hosted by me, of course. Your host, Taylor Phillips. The uh, the Red Wings are back home against uh, the Blackhawks uh, on March 11th, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's true ahead of time. So uh, that's going to wrap it up. I'm out of here. I'll talk to you Saturday. TTFN, Tots off for now.